I lost four wheel drive. Uh, I'm just back from the uh, first small off roading adventure. Uh, we faced some technical problems. So the first experience is you can pretty comfortable sleep in the car. Riding in the terrain, I lost four-wheel drive after like two hours or something like that. I don't know what happened and I can troubleshoot on my own. You can see there on the back, there is some of my camping stuff. Like experience for riding off-road, I was kind of impressed. Uh, even though I didn't have any proper tires, any lift, uh, I don't have anything more than the standard and I actually was able to follow through the forest mud as for the car without any preparation i'm pretty okay with that uh, the big problem was the tow bar i was hanging everywhere pretty much i will try to get some removable one or i will just remove this one i get back home and i have four-wheel drive orange lights blinking which means it's like a check engine for the four-wheel drive and i have a traction control blinking and some other control blinking and check engine blinking and I think the check engine blinking is only because they didn't plug the plug to the top of the airbox and I will try to get my hands on the two solenoids which are controlling pretty much the whole uh, four-wheel drive first check if after applying 12 volt solenoids are reacting properly if they are reacting properly then we are going to put the car on the leaf and then we will have a closer look on the sensors on the transfer box there are five sensors in general the problem seems to be that uh, there is a misconception between uh, my uh, four-wheel drive shifter and the four-wheel drive itself the four-wheel drive is off but the uh, shifter say it's on it's misconception for the computer and it will show the error so i will get onto it so i parked the car other way around so i can work under the roof in case of rain and you see this is the this is the state we are in so we have this orange center differential light blinking and this means it's like a check engine for the four wheel drive system our starting point, I will now open the bonnet and start getting my hands on the solenoids. These two solenoids, there are actually controlling the whole four-wheel drive. We will take them out, apply some 12 volt to it and see if they are reacting as they should. So I decide to remove the airbox, which was here, just to have a little bit better access. So I managed to remove the first solenoid and definitely there was a lot of vacuum in this hose. The lack of vacuum is not the problem. I think the problem will be in those things itself. Let us investigate a little bit further. We have these two pins. We need to apply 12 volt to it and see if they're click. So to simulate 12 volt, I have like a laboratory power supply. I know I have a battery there, but I don't have any clamps and here I have clamps. so. We have our solenoid here. I connect the one cable and now I will put the second cable and we will see if it actually clicks or is there a noise. Oh. Yeah, it works. So there you have a second solenoid. We will prove this one now. and one hand is pain in the butt. Right. That's good. So we have 12 there. I don't know if you can see it. It's 12. Whoops. It's working. So it's not the simplest solution. So as you see, it's not the simplest solution I could imagine. I don't really know how far I can push it here. Hi there, it's another day. Today we escalate the situation a little bit. We have a car on the lift. I keep going with troubleshooting. I'm checking the switch in the front axle. This is the place where the switch is placed. So, yep. Don't get oil on yourself, right? So we have this actuator, which is controlling this arm here. And this arm is moving inside there. When this 
arm is in this position, you are in your four-wheel four -wheel drive. And if you want to engage the two-wheel drive, you need to apply vacuum. And then it will decouple front axle from the rear. And this switch here will give a call to the controlling unit that is actually engaged or disengaged. I have it here. And the trick is we need to connect our multimeter to this two pins inside there, hold it still. And we want to make sure that uh, we don't have any contact when the switch is in this position. And we have under five ohms when we push it in. And this switch gives three ohms, which is perfectly okay. So we will put it back in, order some oil for the diff and we will go to the transfer case itself and try to investigate there. So. Hey guys, another day, another short moment to do some stuff. I will show you now from the other perspective. I have removed the connection to the rear differential, six screws, size 12 from behind, 14 in front. And we get this cross member supported on the lift here so we support the weight of the uh, everything which is connected to cross member and uh, remove these screws here i think it's a size 15 for some reason and now we are going to lower this thing down wish me luck as far as I'm comfortable with. That's plenty. I find it quite annoying that you cannot switch the direction of a camera in your phone just uh, while making your material. But this is what we are talking about. You see here, one, two, three, four, five. All these five switches we are going to replace. And I have already the replacement coming. It will be here in a few days. So we will go now a little bit in the theory of the troubleshooting. And we have here schematics which shows us on which switch should be active and which should be not active when we are in the particular switch position, which is exactly here. You see, according to my position of the switch in the cockpit, SIG 2H, we should have a switch A and B on. Then we look which one is A and which one is B, and they should give us a reading that it's uh, on. So that's what we are going to do now. I will take a plug from the particular switches, connect one side to the mass, second side to the switch, and we will see what the reading is. We are in the 2H inside, but the reading from the switch A is on and the reading from switch B is off and it's supposed to be on. This means every other switch is off as well, so it fits perfect to the first here, first um, column. We should have on, second on is missing and three offs. So the B is the suspect number one. So we have connector B. You see you are on top of the top of the gearbox at the moment or actually transfer case. We have this switch here, which I undone with the spanner. And now we can unscrew. We undone the Kai cable. I measured this switch before and it was not uh, giving any contact and it's supposed to be on while two wheel drive. So uh, this is, uh, if I'm right, it's a switch B from the schematics. So yeah, what we will do, we will take it out. We will take a look on it. it looks a little bit dirty there. It was not working really. So I will test it with the multimeter apparently now after i move it it's now giving a connection because you see to get this switch disengaged if i'm right with reading the schematics uh so this is a switch b so this is the one so to turn this one off it's on 
on the two wheel drive and it's on on the four wheel drive and it's going off when the four wheel drive uh, with the central differential locked it's going off so he will stay in the on position for pretty much 99% of the driving which normal driver do so he will not move at all uh, so of course the other ones here especially this one E it's probably prone to get stuck as well it's common issue uh, they just don't move so they get stuck and then you sh you go on the four high with the central differential differential lock you press it in and then you go back to four high and then it's stuck in the wrong state for the for the computer and the computer shows you orange blinking light so let's put it in connect it and we see what it would happen you can buy the switches in internet don't go uh, aftermarket just go oem because it's proven that uh, aftermarket are aftermarket are shit so you can buy this for 30 few bucks in internet original apparently and uh but you cannot really buy uh ceiling washer for it and the ceiling washer by the dealer it's one euro 50 cents with the cheapest i find available immediately was five six bucks so good we are in we are going to connect the plug somehow without looking i put some contact spray of course on every con connector and now let's go have a quick look as you see i'm very careful with so i always go horizontal we have a key and let's see Are we neutral neutral as it gets and orange or green green you see there you go and you can hear if i i will switch now to four high you will hear the noise maybe Yep, you can hear the actuator and you can see engaging, you see, it's awesome. It's, this is the reason. So yeah, I will turn it off and there you go. So I'm waiting for the switches. They will be here probably on Monday. Yeah, that was fun. I was, uh, well, I, I am pretty happy. So in between, I will try to investigate where is the power steering leaking and how to fix it. And yeah, I appreciate comments, likes and subscribe subscription. Bye.